Okay. And what happens is, is that Agent Ollinger is driving you back to the St. Charles Parish Jail after a debriefing, right? Yeah. And he's got the shoes in his car, right? Yeah. And you know he does, right? Yeah. So you weren't able to do your trick where you switched out your tennies at the meeting. He has the shoes and it's going to happen at the jail, right? No. No. How is it going to go down? What do you expect is going to go down at this point? I thought I was going to get the shoes and put them on, but he told me he got to approve it through the, through the St. Charles police office. Okay. I thought I was going to be able to switch, but I couldn't. That ain't going to work. Okay. And then, and then he was told that people have been smuggling drugs and shoes into the St. Charles Parish jail, right? I don't know what he was told. How am I supposed to know that? Okay. But just to be clear, was this your first time, not just with Agent Ollinger, but in general? Hadn't you been smuggling drugs into the jail and shoes for a long time at this point? No, I never smuggled no drugs and shoes. You never successfully smuggled drugs in through shoes. Is that your testimony? That was my first time doing it with shoes. With shoes. Okay, well, while we're on that subject, what were the other instances in where you smuggled drugs into the St. Charles Parish Jail or any other jail that you've been in? What? Tell me other times you've smuggled drugs into jail. I've got weed in jail. Okay, how did you get your weed in jail? It's easy. Buy from people. Did you ever smuggle weed into jail? Yeah. How? You send it in through, you send it through the mail. Send it through the mail. I imagine they check your mail, right? Not legal mail. Not legal mail. So you use legal mail to traffic drugs into the jail. Is that correct? That's the best way to do it. You, I never said that I was no criminal. I mean, that I wasn't bad. That's what I do. Okay, so that the jury would understand, you would take a stack of documents like this, and then you'd put a hole in the middle of them, right? And you'd dig it out, and then you'd create a false front, and you'd close it up, and you'd have it sent to you by illegal mail with drugs inside of it, right? Yeah. Okay, and is that something you would involve your lawyer in? Yeah, I'd involve my lawyer. My lawyer didn't have nothing to do with that. I just, did you? Go ahead. I just told you, my lawyer or James didn't have nothing to do with none of my schemes that I was doing. None of your schemes. It's just the best, the best way to do it was that way. So that's the way I done it. Okay. Would you have, would you have, so who was doing this for you? It all depends. We had dudes in the dorm. We take turns doing it. Okay, so you and the guys in your dorm took turns, but who did it for you? Who was creating fake legal materials for you to use to smuggle drugs into the prison? The trustee. No, on the outside, someone was doing it, though, for you, right? We print, we print the paper up at the law library, and then we, then we send it out. Okay, and who would you send it to? just either my partner girl or it don't it don't matter we take turns okay who was your partners who's your partner who you were involving in this drug trafficking conspiracy i don't know his girl what's his name it's dudes that are on the on the dorm with me it all depends no who are they dap dap yeah What's Dap's real name? I don't know his real name like that. Okay. So Dap's girl would, you'd get, you'd make the fake legal materials in the jail and then you'd give them to her and then she would carve out the empty space or you would already have that pre-made for her? No. When we see how the scheme go, when we see how it go, we sent the, we sent the paper and showed her like, look, this is how we go when we send the legal work. 
we showed her like the blueprint of everything. And then we sent the paper in a, in a blank, like the vanilla envelope with the, with some, with anybody's legal work and stuff and sent it out. And she sent it back to us. Okay. And would you have her put Ms. Johnson's return address on these envelopes so that it looked like it was really coming from your lawyer? You put, you put a lawyer address, you put a lawyer address on there. Okay. So for you, it would come from Ms. Johnson or Herb Larson or Steve Lemoyne, your lawyers, right? That's what address you've got to use because that's your lawyer. Okay. So you're using the fact that your lawyers are licensed members of the bar and that they're entitled to communicate with you confidently to illegally traffic drugs into the prison? No. Listen. Listen to what I'm saying. If you, the scheme that I was doing, if I would like, if I would have get caught, I know out the gate I got to take my lick and tell them the truth like, man, that was my work. I ain't, they ain't do nothing, you know. They ain't have no idea that this was going on. So as of them, they out the picture. They never had nothing to do with me. It's just a scheme. That's just like white collar crime where you steal credit cards and use people's identity. That's what I was doing. Did it occur to you that if this package was found to have contraband in it, that the first person that the police would go talk to and possibly arrest would be your lawyer who's trying to help you, Ms. Johnson? No. It did. So it never occurred to you that by lying in a way that implicated your attorney that you were, you were potentially exposing them to arrest and prosecution? No. When that package come through, they don't know who it come from. So the first person they're going to ask is the person who it came to and ask you, was you, was you expecting mail from your lawyer? I know I wasn't expecting no mail from my lawyer. So they, when they call my lawyer, they call my lawyer. My lawyer knows she ain't send me nothing. So ain't nothing, ain't nothing wrong with that. I mean, there's something wrong with it. The only thing wrong with it is that I'm smuggling in weed and that I put out the bag where it looked like she had something to do with it. But I let them know the truth, what it was already. And they caught it many a times before like that anyway. So they know that it ain't lawyers. And then they know how it was, how it was on the envelope, that it was jail made. Okay, so when you were caught for this, what happened? I told him that it wasn't mine. And then, so when your jailhouse legal mail was found with contraband in it, who came to talk to you about that? Orazio? No, I forgot what the mailman, the mailman came with it first. The mailman. Okay. But who, when you say the mailman, are you talking about a guard? The police. The police. Okay. And so the police found your smuggled marijuana, right? Yeah. How much? I don't know. Okay. When was this? I don't know the dates. What year was it? This year? Last year? No, it would have to be probably in 15 or I don't, I don't really know what date. Okay. Was it only one time you got caught? or multiple times that you got caught. I only got caught one time. You only got caught one time, but you did this how many times? What, in my name? Yeah, 10. I ain't do it but one time. Your testimony is that you only did it the time you got caught? Yeah, because it got hot. The people, the people, at first we was getting into dudes who was like, they wasn't, they wasn't really on no cases like that. So when, when we seen that it was going through like that, why would I let another dude get it in their name and I popped them off for free if I could put it in my name myself? Okay. And anyway, you came up with another plan, right? I came up with another plan because if I put it in this dude's name and they got popped, he going to tell on me. So I might as well put it in my name and just get it myself. Okay, were you charged with a crime for trying to smuggle marijuana into the St. Charles Parish Jail through your fake legal mail? No, because they didn't have no, they didn't have no proof that I was the one who really brought it in. Okay, so even though it had your name on the envelope, 
and it had your lawyer's name on the return address and it was your fake legal mail and you actually did it, you said they didn't have proof, right? I didn't say I did it. I didn't tell them that I did it. This is what I'm saying. They've been doing, people been sending mail. They've been catching contraband and dudes mail all day. Dudes will send it in your name knowing your information. Like, I could send in this dude's name and when they come, I'll be like, man, look, that's mine. And then pop them off for him not to say nothing. That's what was going on. But it was going on so much. Well, when they were popping it, we didn't know they popped it on the whole other side. Okay. So you and your partners were bringing so much marijuana into the jail through fake legal mail that they couldn't, that the jail couldn't tell whose was whose, right? It wasn't so much. That was nothing but less than three grams. Okay. And then when they confronted you and said, hey, there's fake marijuana in your legal mail, you just said, ain't mine, right? When I say that it's fake mail, I don't know. No, you said when fake legal mail, when you, when they confronted you, you just said, that's not mine. I had nothing to do with it, right? Yeah, because it wasn't mine. So you lied to, you lied to the St. Charles Parish Jail when you denied that you had anything to do with it, right? I just told you that one time it wasn't, I have nothing to do with it. Okay, and were you making all of these arrangements on the jail phone? No, I just told you. You write, we in cahoots with friends. We see how it's going down. We jailhouse people. We smoked weed on the street. So that's what we want to do. It ain't like we're trying to hurt nobody. We're trying to smoke and just jose our time, pass our time with the weed. Okay, and were you making these arrangements on contraband cell phones at any point? Contraband cell phones? You're not allowed to have weed in jail, right? No. You're not allowed to have a cell phone in jail, right? No. But you've had weed in jail, right? Yeah. And you've had cell phones in jail, right? I had a cell phone. One. When was that? Way before I started cooperating. Okay. Going back to this instance where you were not abusing your attorney-client relationship, but where you were abusing your relationship with the FBI to smuggle marijuana in. And again, that was in, in June 2006. He brought you there, and eventually you went... You went back to your dorm and he was waiting for Orazio with your shoes, right? Who? Agent Ollinger. He didn't never met me with no Orazio at no jail. He wasn't sitting. When you talking about? Exactly. So he, so he ended up leaving with your shoes, right? Yeah, I just told you. He said he got to approve it. So he never, he never agreed that he gonna just give it to me. I'm trying to get it without the police even knowing, but he ain't letting it go down like that. He need permission from St. Charles Police to give me my shoes. So that's why, that's what I'm saying. He ain't, ain't none of that was going on. Okay, but you didn't find out that he found them that day, right? You didn't find out that day that he found the fake drugs in your shoes, did you? Did I find out that day? You didn't find out that day, did you? No. No. Okay. So, five days later, you called him on the phone. The call on June 15th, 2016, at 1.31 p.m. Okay. When you told, tell Agent Ollinger in this call five days later that you talked to Orazio too, and he told you to hold off on the shoes and he's going to handle it, at that point, were you aware of the fact that Agent Ollinger knew that you had been using him to smuggle drugs into the jail? I didn't never. How am I going to know if I ain't never talked to him? I'm asking you, sir. Oh. Did you know at that point? No, I didn't know. So, when you're telling him that you talked to Orazio and that Orazio is going to handle the shoes, you're still trying to smuggle this weed into the jail, right? Yeah. I didn't ever say I ain't try to smuggle it. I was trying to get it. I tried to get it all the way until I got caught with it. When I got caught with it, that's when that stopped. Other than that, 
I was still trying to get it in. I ain't trying to hide it. I told James it was my fault. I messed up, you know, that, you know, I tried to get the weed in. He told me that, you know, something going to happen behind it or whatever like that. But at the end of the day, I just told him what the real was, man. I was trying to get weed in. It's hard back there, you know, at the end of the day. I'm trying to make money, trying to do something to take care of my people. My people rely on me. So at the end of the day, that's what I was trying. And I just told him. So it's another hustle, right? Yeah. Because you're, because not only are you going to use some of this weed, but you're also going to turn it around and sell it to other inmates, right? Yeah, to make money. To make money to support your family, right? Yeah. And so that you're not such a burden on them, so they don't need to put money in your store, right? Yeah. And when you said you're, you talked to Orazio about it, you also involved Orazio in this effort to get the shoes in, right? Yeah. So, not only did you involve Special Agent Ollinger, but also the head of internal investigations in the jail was also, you were trying to get him to help you get these shoes in, right? Yeah. And did you think at all that if you successfully used the head of investigations at the jail or a special agent of the FBI as a drug mule that they might lose their jobs? Did you ever think about that? No, because I didn't think about getting caught. You weren't worried about them, right? I said I wasn't thinking about that because I didn't think I was getting caught. Okay. Is it fair to say that you were not worried about the consequences of your actions on Agent Ollinger or Mr. Orazio? No. I told you. I said I didn't think I was getting caught. I'm not going to say that I wasn't worried about them. Why would I say that if they never did me nothing? Do you remember Agent Ollinger finally confronting you about the fact that you tried to use him to smuggle drugs into a jail? Did I what? Do you remember that Agent Ollinger at some point eventually confronted you about how you tried to use him to smuggle drugs into the jail. Yeah. Okay. And that was at a debriefing the next month, right? I believe so. I don't know what date. And you're sitting back in the jail and you're still trying to get these shoes and you go to the debriefing thinking that you might finally get the shoes, right? I don't know what was going on, bruh. Something wasn't going right if I was trying to go a whole other way about doing it. So I, I don't know. So you had some other hustle that you were going to do if this shoe thing wasn't going to work out. Man, when you're in jail, you think about things to do. You don't. At the end of the day, I just feel as though that was a, that was some petty weed. That ain't nothing. So I wasn't worried about that. I'm trying to, you know, just my time pass my time and, you know, see what's going to go on and move on. So, no big deal what you did. Yeah, the only big deal is that I, I done that bad for, I put James in a predicament like that and my lawyer. But other than, to me, that's simple because I got, I got four life sentences. A weed charge, that's a misdemeanor. They give you traffic tickets on that. So, that ain't no, that ain't nothing. What about a perjury charge? Is that no big deal if you got four life sentences? I wasn't under oath. Okay, so you go to the debriefing and then you leave the debriefing. And finally, after he had the drug shoes for a couple of months, he says to you, hey, I looked in the shoes and they have drugs in it. Tell me what happened. Tell me about this conversation. He told me they got drugs in the shoes. What did you say? I confessed to it and told him, you know, my fault, James. I f***ed up. I was trying to go with my move, bruh. I ain't, you know, think I was going to get caught. I didn't want to put your job in jeopardy. Don't think that, you know, I wasn't, I was just throwing you out there like that. And, you know, we just talked about the sh And he just said that something's going to happen about it. 